Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Why? Well, they have their reasons, but usually a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. The Merovingian is a lineage of kings in France. The story has it that um, the Merovingian kings descending from a king called Merové, hence the name, are descendants of Christ himself. The blood of Christ was in fact his, his lineage, his, his uh, child carried by Mary Magdalene and who came to France. The people who are still nowadays in real life society descending from those Merovingian families do believe that they can't be more aristocratic because they descend from Christ. Bring me the eyes of the oracle and I will give you back your savior. He's a very, very old program. He, he's one of the oldest and meanest programs in the Matrix. He's really sort of one of the kings of the underworld, a personification of all forms of indulgence. And that reveals, obviously, a lot about him and his philosophy. His philosophy is causality, and basically that is the philosophy of the entire machine world, of the entire Matrix. Basically, I think he's bored. He is so much inside the system, he has understood the system completely. And like his wife, he feeds on human emotions. And action. You can either run to the restaurant and tell my husband what I have done, or you can stay there and die. My character in the film is Persephone. She's very elegant, very sophisticated. Persephone, in the Greek mythology, was the daughter of the king of the gods, Zeus, and the goddess of fertility, Demeter. And uh, she was kidnapped by the king of the underworld, Hades, to be his queen. I mean, Persephone is not human, but she wants to feel human emotions. She's like a vampire. Instead of sucking blood, she sucks emotions and feelings from human beings. In English you say, in English you say, uh, clothes do make the man. For Persephone is the contrary, because the way how she dresses reveals a lot about who she is and about her personality. For me, Matrix is much more than an action movie. It's a story about love. It's a philosophy of life. Now you know why this man looks like he does, because he sniffs water through his nose. <laughs> Which must be very uncomfortable. Bless him. Characters are so strong, but you, you, don't, you don't need to have that many words. It's all, it's, yeah, it's all visual with these guys. Put your clothes are on and adorn yourself in those sunglasses. It's just whole effect. You can't help but be bad or be cool. What our characters do, we kill. Yeah, we, we kill. We just them. have a damn we'll good time within the Matrix. Um, we maim, murder, kill you. The Mirovigium. He's the brain, we're the brawns. So if he wants someone wasted, we'll go and waste them with efficiency. Yes. And okay. pleasure. And we'll pleasure. Enjoy it. Oh, yeah, we enjoy it at the same yeah. time. I, I think a big emphasis on getting the part was uh, our martial arts capabilities. We've both got ex extensive experience in martial arts and we both enjoy it. It's going to hurt. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> a madly physical film, you know. I mean, hats off to the guys, you know, like Keanu and Carrie Ann and, 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 and Lawrence, you know, they put themselves through put physical hell to get the ability and the martial arts experience they have, and we've been doing it for 16 years, so it's, and we find it hard. Oh, Dad, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was good. We've been lazing around within the Matrix frame for God knows how long, enjoying ourselves, and then, you know, this big moment comes up, the one's there, and Morpheus is there, Trinity is there, the key maker. This is what we've been waiting for. This is this is our, our ultimate goal, is to have this confrontation. Uh, oh, didn't you go on? That's 
Right. <laughs> Obviously, I'll be stopping. You. <laughs> well, one of us has got to be the intelligent one. Yeah, it's fair play. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll kick. And he will kick my butt. Right. You do. As you a do. matter of fact, we're because if you don't, you're in big I'm in big trouble. But as a matter of fact. You know, we will make a good comment. <laughs> yeah. The keymaker at Ancient Jungle. <laughs> I'm Randall De Kim, and I play the keymaker. I help the heroes. <laughs> well, I uh, flew out to Los Angeles and auditioned for the brothers. And action. Oh, yeah. And um, I guess they liked what they saw. Yeah, we could see those things. It was, uh... <laughs> it was thoroughly exciting. I was jumping around the apartment. <laughs> it's a brilliant set. Made my character. <laughs> In many respects, made my character. It gave him a history. I mean, the imagination, the, the craftsmanship that went into the, the making of this, this little cell. Uh, the minute I saw it, I felt I, I felt at home. I wanted to go and, and lay in my little bedding over there, turn on the faucet, wash my hands, you know, work this machine. It, it's brilliantly, brilliantly conceived and executed. Action. Well, every time there's a, I've had to do it, that thing, you meditate on mortality. The question about this one is, how does an old program die? What makes it different than a human dying? It's so much fun. I wish everybody could do it. <laughs> I, I, I can't express the joy of it. Exhilarating. I never dreamed that in my latter years I would be doing something like this. I felt like a little, a, a little kid having a big, big, huge adventure. It's a great honor and privilege to be a part of this modern epic. <laughs> Papa, the train! My name is Tanvir Atwa. I'm playing Sati. I was in the scene where um, Colin was opening the door and bad guys were coming both ways. The line that I'm supposed to say is, I'm scared to rap. That's my line. I'm in the train station and I help, and I help this boy find the Matrix. His name's Neo. Good morning. He wants to go to the Matrix, but the train man doesn't let him get on the train because you have to take a train to go to the Matrix. And this is the train station. That's one of my lines. I guess for the central characters, especially Neo, for him to get from one world to this other world, um, he has to go through the train man. Down here, I make the rules. Down here, I make the threats. Down here, I'm God. He's kind of like the ferryman crossing the river Styx. But the train man is not necessarily a very cooperative person. The stakes in this world are quite high. You know, there's drama all the time. It's been a long day. Are you used to long days, boys? I love the sort of the the abstract nature of these films. I love the, um, the fantasy nature of these films. They deal with our psyche and the fears, etc., that we have in the real world. And I think that the, the Matrix films express that just as the Mad Max films did, just as even, I guess, the Star Wars films. In order to make certain psychological journeys, we need these films. Set and action. Hello, Neil. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the Matrix. Basically, it's a scene in which Neo meets the architect of the Matrix. It is a place that we've actually seen once before in the first movie, but only a little glimpse of it. It's implying that perhaps he was the one watching Neo during that interrogation. So here we are, back uh, in that place. 
Well, originally I went for a different part. I went, um, I was told they wanted somebody to play, um, I, I don't know who it was, it was a counselor, I think. I suddenly got a different script and was asked to read for this completely other part, um, which completely bamboozled me because, of course, I hadn't read the whole script. I only read the scenes that I was in, and I thought, what the hell is this? God slash devil, the father of the Matrix, he says. And I thought, wow, this is good. Um, yeah, I can do that. Um, I can do my cheap Orson Welles imitation and um, <laughs> get paid for it. <laughs> this will be the sixth time we have destroyed it. And we are exceedingly efficient at it. It's malevolent, not in a, not in a moral sense. It's, it's malevolent in a, oh, well, this formula doesn't work. Let's scrub it out and try something else. It's mathematical malevolence. We shot it over a three-day period. It was hell. <laughs> Um, mainly because I sort of spoke virtually non-stop and count every now and then I'd say a reaction, but I had to kind of carry the scene in terms of the dialogue. Bullshit. Bullshit. It was Keanu who sort of translated for me what the brothers were trying to say, for which I will remain eternally grateful. So between the brothers and Keanu, they've taught me how to act in a way that I didn't understand before. The key was to kind of just wipe everything clean and just imagine that I was like a blank blackboard. And then it made sense. I expected the center of the matrix to be a mathematical formula, some sort of mathematical construct, not humanized. I was very surprised that it turned out to be a person. That was quicker than the others. Others? How many others? The whole belief system of being the one is cheddar, because I'm not the one, I'm the sixth one. So I learned that I don't know as much as I thought I did. And then I'm there I'm given the choice of humanity or trinity. It's funny that Neo just goes for trinity. <laughs> Neo's representing this fundamental volition, choice, decision, purpose, mission. Fighting against all odds, but he's now confronted with the embodiment, the exemplar of the determinism and the nihilism and the architect. And having to make that choice, love on the one hand, the alternative on the other. I mean, this is uh, <clears throat> rich. This is rich. But it's that whole thing of choice and that whole thing of, you know, I don't, I don't believe everything I hear, and I don't think that. Every, what everyone says to me, Neo, is the truth, or it has to be the truth. That was a, a complicated scene, which was completely shot, uh, surrounded by a blue screen. Uh, and then he has a bunch of monitors all around him, like hundreds and hundreds of monitors. The uh, images inside the monitors, of course, we're going to shoot, but they'll be shot in a you know, fairly unique way so that we can do uh, tricks of uh, perspective uh, on Neo, the Neos in the monitors. Some basic uh, camera feedback loops where we can travel from the center of the environment here through monitors back into the environment and out again if we choose. It's really like a uh, limitless number of possibilities how you could actually go in and out of the space, particularly when everything that surrounds you is computer graphics to start with, so you can do interesting things. The assignments we had for littering the screens in the background really had to do with the folly of man. We just figured it was a short history of recorded images, so we took from newsreel, World War One or Two through you know, contemporary time, the sort of leaders and events that the audience that was watching The Matrix would be familiar with. We had leaders of all different sorts, not necessarily always evil, just those that seemed to have an effect in the world order through the uh, 20th century. And it was just a hyper-informational delivery uh, that really didn't matter if you really saw everything. It was really just about the architect's access to an infinity of information related to Neo's, you know, consciousness of who he was. Trinity. First was the folly of man, and then it became Neo's folly and his preoccupation with Trinity and saving her and the folly of an unreal life, a constructed life that he never led, and the fact that every moment of his life was a construction of the architect or the machinery of the matrix. And so he was demonstrating, I suppose, to Neo that it was all an elaborate fabrication.
to break his will, I suppose. When Neo has problems with uh, deciding which way he will choose, there's a certain level of, uh, you know, multiple personalities and responses from multiple personalities reacting to the architect's questions. So that one way of visualizing that might be with just more individualized Neos. The, the one entity is being splintered so that his internal world is becoming externalized. Right. So it's all about different aspects of his selfhood. See how happy the Keanu the actor got? <laughs> whoa. Yeah, it'll be a whoa. <laughs> For you guys, I'll do whoa with my pants on. <laughs> All right. <laughs>